Hello everyone, and welcome to the Deeply Renegade podcast. My name is Molly, also known as the Deeply Renegade, and I'd like to welcome you guys to episode 181. Um, today is Saturday, May 6th, 2017, and I'm glad you could join me today. It is, um, like, there's still, like, a little bit of light. I think having the shades open does make it a little bit better. This is probably the most light that's getting in the room because it is sort of sun oh, Whatever. It hasn't gone crazy enough that I've decided to go and um, buy a light for this. Um, there's still a fish tank on my back porch, otherwise I'd be recording outside. Whatever. So, today was bizarrely um, the voting day for, like, the city council and the school board and that sort of thing. So, yeah, whatever. Um, so, I was chatting after that, and then I also went to the Grace Women's Conference. So, um, I taught a bunch of women how to knit. Um, some people didn't need a lot of help, and some needed lots of help. So, it was very interesting trying to change how I was explaining things until it made sense and being like, let me show you what I'm doing. <laughs> um, and that if someone is new to knitting, you just can't teach them how to cast on. <laughs> but if, but if people did know how to knit, then what was it? I went through the whole like cast on someone's project, went through like, okay, this is how to knit and then handed it to her and she already, she already knew. <laughs> She was being very patient with me, I guess. <laughs> and then it was like, oh, that was why you were interested in me casting on. <laughs> so then we practiced casting on after that. Where it was like, oh, you're all over this. This is the, the piece of missing information. <laughs> so I, I did that with my coworker. Um, so my coworker's a crochet and I'm a knitter. So we covered both sides. So that was helpful. Um, and I'll probably be doing it again. It was a good time. The time went really fast. It was like 1.30 to, um, oh, what was it? It was like 1.30 to 5, and we zoomed right by. So this is actually not too far off color-wise. Maybe it's a little grayed out on the screen, but this is my Viajante, and as you can tell, I'm in that more elky sort of brown color right now so it's the cooler brown and what's interesting about the mesh is that it's really hard to tell actually where I was alternating right now and it's coming a little gray on the skin it probably doesn't help that I have gray walls and a gray shirt but um and I thought I was making pro positive progress but as you can see, I have wound up all, so I am still in a negative progress zone. <laughs> so, this all started well and good. I was talking with someone on Ravelry, and they were saying about, like, oh, we, like, I started to do, um, I started to have, like, a daily minimum goal for walking. I was like, oh, interesting. Um, like, because I've been keeping track of my steps, at least sometimes, at the very least, sometimes I'm just entertained after a long day at work, seeing how many times I've gone, how many flights of stairs I've gone up. <laughs> if I have to keep going to the lab, <laughs> that's like two flights right there. So then you can estimate how many times you've been to the lab that day by how many times you've gone up the stairs. <laughs> and divide them by two. Um, so I've been keeping track of my steps and I have like an average number that I tend to do. But what I've noticed is that on some days of the week, I'm not moving very much at all. So there, there have been some weekends where it's either a Saturday or Sunday, but like I'm hovering right around a thousand or below. So I was like, that probably isn't like the best for me. <laughs> so this was the case where I was like, okay, I'm going to take whatever average number of steps I need now, and add 50% to it as like a intermediate, figure out whether or not I really want to do it. And so um, I was walking up and down 
the outside of my building. So it turns out that if I just do the side, the, the long side of the building, it's like 950 steps. If I sort of go around the corner on one side, a there and back is actually more like 1200. So that's probably what I'm going to do in the future is whenever I do two sides of the building. <laughs> Um, and just go back and forth a couple of times, and I well exceeded um, my target by doing it that way. So it'd be the case where it's like spend half an hour eating lunch and then spend whatever the remaining 30 minutes enjoying the outdoors and knitting. And then when it's too hot, I can just do the same sort of thing, but um, inside. Because there's long, vast, ridiculous hallways. But while I was doing this, I was, because I'm only working on this project right now, um, I ended up getting off in my mesh. So I had like dropped a yarn over or something like that. And so then I was not doing the correct thing, managed to get done with the other. So it was actually the first half of the row I was doing the incorrect thing. I finished off the second half of the row. I knit a plain round around. And then once I started doing the next uh, mesh row. Then I noticed I was wrong. So I had to take back two rows, which I have not recovered from yet. And then trying to figure out like the least inefficient way of taking back. And I thought I got to figure it out, but then I used less yarn because I wasn't walking when I was fixing it. <laughs> and having the weight of the project sort of pull everything out. I don't know what happened. But I ended up knitting tighter this second time around. Um, so then I had to tank back that row in order to get back to a good spot again. And then undo the things that I fixed that were okay, but really. So I was really hoping to be done with this project. And I was like, oh, I knit a ton on it and I'm in the last half an ounce and it's gonna be fine. And I'm not there yet, not there. So. This is the Via Hante. It's a Martina Bem pattern. You can see all of the delightful translucent mesh going on in there and the deep rich colors that the yarn is um, and all of that other fun stuff. And I'm knitting it out of my Nast Borefruit or my Nast Superwash Merino Merino Silk in the Borefruit colorway. And it is 12 ounces of yarn, so it's a lot of yarn. Um, bigger than a skein of all my stuff. Um, and I'm actually wearing my Diamante today because I wanted to be able to just show people like if they're like, oh, what are you working on? Because I got to pick it up like twice <laughs> during the however many hours um, of teaching people how to knit. Um, it was like, ah, oh, it's this and you can wear it as a poncho and it does this and it does that and isn't this cool? And what was it? Well, I had a hilarious conversation with someone like, you could put that on the five miles app and sell it for 30 bucks. I'm like, <sighs> like, eh, I don't, I don't think that's going to be worth it because I spent $60 on the yarn. <laughs> She's like, oh yeah, that's true. So I'm like, it was not the time to have a discussion with someone about like how much money my time was worth. <laughs> But it was like, like no, no, th this is an interesting idea. But yeah, no, it'd be like, she she did not know how much, <laughs> or what would it be? Be like, what amount of money would make it be worth my time? So then it was the case. It was like, well, no one's gonna spend three hundred dollars to buy this, and no one's gonna spend five hundred dollars to buy this. I know I'm probably undercutting my spinning time by charging two hundred dollars for this. <laughs> so. Exactly. That that's the challenge. So it'd be the case where what would it be when when you have more time than money, then what would it be? It probably makes sense to sell that sort of thing, but I had more money than time, so <laughs> full of nonsense. <laughs> but that was a bad time to have that sort of discussion. So I did. That was it was okay. But ah, <sighs> shenanigans. So as such, I did a lot of work on it. I was really focused on trying to get it finished off. I was hopeful that I could, but I, I got foiled. I spent more time, I think, tinking 
in the past few days than I have knitting, sadly. And that was that little screw up that I made was actually happened Friday and was trying to fix it Friday, so oh. So I shall check and see how much I have left in grams. So thirty grams is an ounce. I know that I'm in the last quarter of this, so it should be like half an ounce. Now if it will come up. Oh, I can't even read this. So we're at 10.83 grams to go. And I'm probably still about a gram per row, so it's looking soon. Um, I probably actually should be carrying that scale with me now, thinking about it, because um what would it be? Well it's probably close enough to the beginning of that where it's what have you, but I probably should be actually paying attention now because it will take however much to bind it up, and I'll probably do um, a stretchy bind up. I don't know what I did on this guy. Looks like a normal bind up, actually, so. Whatever. But I think I was running low on yarn on this one because I barely have any laying around at this point, so. Oh well. So that's the Diamante. It's so close. It's going to be done next week. It, it has to be. <laughs> um, but whatever. It's coming. Um, it's coming along. It's good. Um, super warm my lap. I brought, optimistically, um, yarn to start my Find My Fade project today. And even like brought my interchangeable needle set and the whole bit. And I didn't get too much yarn done today. Or not knitting, I can show you. I cast on innumerable projects today. <laughs> but what was it? Part of the thing was I did like sign a confidentially confidentiality agreement and that sort of thing. So there was no pictures. There is no proof. <laughs> but it did happen. So that's coming along. It's getting pretty big. Um, and it's really warm in my lap. So today was a mid-80s sort of day, so it's pretty hot up here too. So fans going and a whole bit. I don't know why I'm wearing this, but I'm wearing shorts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. So the other thing that is going is the alpaca silk spin. So this is Greenwood Fiber Arts. It is a 50% alpaca, 50% silk. And I'm spinning it on my ludicrous ratio. Where this is like crazy, and this is like super crazy, and that's ludicrous. <laughs> On my fast flyer, and I'm getting a really, you see, you see that? So I'm getting a really, really stinking fine yarn. The hope being, whatever. I'm I'm going for the record for this one. I I want this to be the most ridiculously fine spin I've ever spun, and that probably means I'm gonna leave it for plying later. I'll have to do something because I'm going to run out of bobbin soon. <laughs> I'm either going to have to line something off or who knows what, but I did get pretty far on this guy. I still have quite a lot of fiber left though, so I am doing it. I'm using it up. So this is the fiber. It is the alpaca is the black and the silk has been dyed. Um, so it's taking a, so the silk didn't necessarily strike as a really vivid dye, but the black ends up making the color like really rich and cool. So when you have like everything smooshed tightly together while you're spinning it, it makes for a really cool color effect. Um, and then it had this, been doing this slow color progression thing, which I've been enjoying. It's been a fun spin so far. I'm a little afraid I might be overspinning it a bit on the ludicrous ratio. Um, there are times when the, the twist will start to really take up hard and then I'm like drafting furiously to get the twist on the right side of my fingers. And so that's been a little bit challenging, but I think that has more to do with the ludicrous ratio than <laughs> um, my, the fiber prep. The fiber prep has been really lovely. So. Um, it was sort of the case where I got alerted to this prep existing and then the very next week bought some. So, um, 
like, hey, it's Judith McKenzie. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> but I did want it to be really fine because I want it to be something lacy. Because um, would it be? There isn't much need for alpaca in Texas. Um, they might grow alpacas in Texas, but you can't use a lot of alpaca. You know what I mean? It's hot. It is not cold for long enough part of the year to justify. Oh, such as so. That is coming along slowly but surely. Um, it's been good in the dark spinning, so because um, my knitting is no longer really good in the dark project. Whatever. Um, another thing that got in the way of knitting this week was so. Um, what was it? I ended up going over to a friend's house for knit night and we had margaritas and awesome matches. Um, let me explain. Texas matches are an amazing thing. Um, like, the Midwesterners, they, they don't know what they're missing. Um, if you have a Texas nacho, someone lovingly takes the chip, spreads um, the beans onto the chip, sprinkles the meat, which is likely chopped steak, and then covers it in cheese, and then it's lovingly baked until the cheese melts, and then you put it, and then you devour it. And that every single chip gets this loving nacho treatment. <laughs> like, it's amazing. Like, th this is... The, this is a, a culinary achievement that, that Texas has, has applied, and unfortunately, Texas hasn't spread. <laughs> but it was the case where we were doing our thing, and it was like, oh, you need to watch American Gods. So we watched the first episode of the series, and um, it was like, yeah, no, we just got the book back. Would you be interested in borrowing it? So now I am 100 pages into the book. So instead of knitting this morning or something like that. I was reading American Gods. <laughs> <laughs> and um, if you are interested, the show appears to be a, a very good adaptation of the book. Um, Neil Gaiman, who is the author, is the executive producer, um, and they have any line in the book that was like a really, really good line is said verbatim in the show. So. Like, other, the show is actually expanding on things, if that makes any sense. So it'd be the case where it might be a short thing in in the book, but it will it might have been expanded into, like, a 15-minute scene of why it is that the Norse gods are in America. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> so I, I found it to be very interesting um, and decided that I like Neil Gaiman's other stuff. It, this is one of the few ones that I hadn't read yet, so I'm getting caught up. But that's bad for knitting because I don't have, like, I'm first off, I'm borrowing the book, so I can't do dreadful things I would normally do to my own books. <laughs> it's not mine. Um, the second thing is I don't really have a good way to hold it open, so normally I would be able to make that work, but really I need something that will lay flat on its own. So a magazine and knitting, that's fine. But a book, a book is a little too compact and thick to get away with that. So um, I might actually end up reading more of it because I love, love, love reading. But I, it's now to the point where like I, I binge. So it'd be the case where I'll just read an entire book all the way through because it's very enjoyable. But I don't necessarily have the time anymore to dedicate to reading the whole entire book. So then I started the case where I have to like make block of time, if that makes any sense. I don't know. So, I probably do need to do it more, but whatever. It might mean that I have to do something silly like get an e-reader so that I don't have this. I The e-reader will lie flat on its own. <laughs> like, that silliness. <laughs> or ask my mom if I can have her e-reader when she's done with it. <laughs> To be my friend, I should say. Whatever. So it'd be the case where, whatever. But it's sort of like, you know, squeezing the balloon. You know what I mean? So to decide to 
take time to do one thing means you have less time somewhere else, so what would it be? So it would be the case where, say, for example, I decide to get an e-reader and knit while using the e-reader, then that means I won't watch any podcast. It would probably isn't the end of the world, but as a podcaster, I guess, <laughs> you have to, like, benchmark, like, a little bit. Um, and so it would be the case where then that time would be spent doing that, or it'd be like, oh, I'm reading and knitting, and now I stopped cooking dinner. <laughs> I mean, like, my husband will die of starvation. <sighs> so sad. <laughs> Poor, dear, sweet, loveful one, not getting fed. <laughs> so, so that, that's always the challenge, because as I said earlier, time is what I'm missing right now. <laughs> So, that is the state of all of that, um, because I am tremendously excited, I did bring up the Find Your Fave yarn, because it's looking, all of the nonsense things that are, like, and stitch marker came up for the ride. So this is going to be my first color. This is Miss Babs in um, North Rumbria, so it's a 100% BFL. I made Kaime socks out of this originally, and it's um, the deep sea colorway, I think, I believe. So it's um, greens and blues, um, but mostly comes off as blue in real life. Um, The next one will be this Cherry Tree Hill. I don't know what blue it is. Um, and this is old school Cherry Tree Hill, so it's actually a little bit different than the base now. So um, this is a, um, a solid blue with some tonalness to it. Next will be Alicia Goes Around, Walk of Snipes Fingering. And, um, ba -dum, ba -dum. The colorway is, oh, I don't know what the colorway is, it's not specified, it's a mystery colorway, um, but gorgeous stuff, I'm like containing, containing it all. Um, so then this one is picking up some of the greens from earlier and then this um, dark blue What's next is um, another tonal blue, but this one is a lighter blue, but it has this dark and light to it. So this is Piedmont Oakland Wild Socks, and I think I call, I don't think it had a colorway, but I think it reminds me of like a cloudy day, but mostly a sunny day. <laughs> so, clouds. So with the whites and then the darker blues. Then I have my Cybers Craft Room in unicorn attack fight or something like that which is sparkly and has like greens and blues and pinks and yellows and all of this nonsense it is my business thing for the find your fave and then i have my oink pigments mermaid tails um or the colorway is mermaid tails and it's a 100 percent superwash merino so this one is mostly greens but then has some blue to it as well. And that's picking up on the greens on my Bazinga skein. And then finally I have my uh, mustache Helleva, which is a 100% merino, ridiculous number of plies, and it's sort of a robin's egg blue with like purples. Um, so not my normal bag. It turns out that I don't... pastels and me don't get along super duper great, but it does bridge to here. So. It is exciting. So, I'm very excited to have the chance to start this guy, and I suppose that if I actually transfer them to this arm, you could actually see them all. In one go, maybe. Of course, using that one. So. And then this first guy be hanging out on the, uh, on the end. So, 
Should be good. There might even be enough left over for this guy for, for socks later. But it'd be the case where it's mostly blues with a little bit of green and then this crazy guy. And this will be the biggest color. So hopefully there'll be one left for that one at the end. And apparently I can't keep them all on the couch at once, but whatever. This isn't a couch, this is a chair. So I am excited to finally be able to start it, and it's fun to be able to see all the colors come together. It was fun. And then that like feeling of satisfaction that I am using some stash yarn that I had it, like a lot of them were gifts from people. Um, most of them were actually. So the only colors that I purposely had bought for myself were these guys, actually. So this was for the... And this one I bought because it was outside my color range. This one, I think I got at Fiber Space, and then this guy was my first Fiber Fest. Um, so, yeah. And I think I got... I'm pretty happy with the color sequence and how things are coming together. Um, it's just a matter of finally getting a chance to cast on. I was sort of worried that I was going to have to cast on last night after it was seemed to be going so badly for fixing my shawl, which might have just been margarita induced. You can't, sometimes you can't tell. My plan worked out well because in the morning it was like, oh, right, fixing it, <laughs> fine. But it was challenging at the time. So I'm really excited about Speckletastic. That's the other thing that's cool about this shawl is that it just eats up and makes the speckles look fantastic. So that garter stitch had be the case where I'm definitely I don't tend to choose to net garter stitch very often, but I I do enjoy doing it. So or I do enjoy the objects I make then I the objects that you end up getting at the end of garter stitch, so it's all good. I'm satisfied. So, uh, I should be able to, before next week, um, hopefully by then I'll have a finished object. I'm going to be working sort of diligently on that tonight, and hopefully I can wrap it up. But I know I should record it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, at some point you're, like, procrastinating by, like, oh, let me finish the, and then you don't. <laughs> Oh, you know what I did finish that? I did finish one of these guys last week, so that was like super duper quick, so this is also not super wash mine. I'm wearing a silk in the jolly colorway. Because I don't think that I had started the alpaca silk till this week. So I have two of these and then this bobbin with a small amount of singles with my experiment on it that I may need to scavenge. Because, what would it be? It'd be the case of like making sure everything is good to go, say for example for Stash Dash. Maybe it makes sense to bind off the shawl after Stash Dash because it's not like I'm going to be um, wearing it for a while. <laughs> scavenge the needles. I don't know. It's been very interesting to see all of the... Well, like, interesting, you know, and a little sad at the same time. So there's been a discussion going on in the Knit Girls group about the stash dash rules. Um, and I think my solution to the problem, which I don't think is going to happen, is the, like, um, you're only allowed to vote for what it would be. What would make sense to me is you're only allowed to vote on the rules that affect you. So, say for example, what would it be? Like, it probably isn't very sporting to have knitters vote about spinning because if you haven't, or if you haven't spun before, I don't think you, you have like maybe a different perception of what's happening. I don't know. It's strange. So it was the case where I voted for counting yardage as spinzilla rules because I'm thinking about every single little bit of fiber that passes through my hands during the process of drafting 
and then all of the fiber that passes through my hands in the process of spinning and counting that all is the yardage that goes into the final thing. Because last year I totally cheated and um, finished my ridiculous silk singles and then plied them together and then realized the yarn that I made was so thin it wasn't going to be usable. Point blank, it was, it was 1500 yards in three ounces. <laughs> Like, I'm never going to spin anything that thin <laughs> ever again. And it, it wasn't a very compelling yarn. So, but then I didn't want to, like, at the point of, like, at that point, you're like, okay, whatever. Um, and I ended up chain plying it. <laughs> like, reballed it, like, skeined it out to figure out the count of the yarn, and then I wound it back on, and then I chain plied the rest of it, so I ended up getting 400 yards total. But that was a demented number of singles that then created a six-ply cable <laughs> of two-ply chain plied on itself, which is just insane. But it was a normal weight then, so that was 400 yards and three ounces. Like, it's still really thin. <laughs> um, and if it was Spinzilla rules, like, I would have done it and not even really thought about it, you know what I mean? But it was sort of the case where I did it, and I took the picture, and I waited to post the picture till after Stash Rush was done, to be quite frank. Because it was like, ah, oh, this plying rule was killing me. <laughs> because, I, because that finished yardage was masking how much work went into it. And so there's like this all knockout, drag em fight about it. It's like... They were doing even like I like looked and saw one of the people who was fighting really hard for keeping the rule the same. It was like, but you don't spin. So it was sort of the case where it was like, if they had a really strong opinion about it and they were a spinner, I would give them more credit. Maybe, maybe that just sounds awful in a way. But it'd be the case where it's like, hey, what would it be like? I, for example, would not feel comfortable voting on a rule involving what you were doing with crochet because I'm not a crocheter, so I'm not sure about all the different things that go into it and why it is that I would care about one way versus the other way. Um, and so that that's sort of how I feel about some of the discussions that were going on. It was like, hey, um, <laughs> like I, I, I'm not going to have a long argument with someone, a crocheter, about what I think the crochet rules are. Why are you having a long involved argument with, um, as a non-spinner with a spinner? Um, so that was, that was probably best thing to do. But it'd be the case where it does bring up the question of, it de depends somewhat on how you view what you're trying to accomplish. Like I need motivation to keep doing projects in the summer because it's so hot and I can't bear the thought of like, I haven't, like, you know, given up and be like, okay, I'm going to use the cotton yarns and the linen yarns in the summertime because I don't like them as much as the wool. But the wool isn't going to get as much use down here. So it's the case where in the summer I knit projects for other people because I can't imagine me wearing it. <laughs> so having a summer, like, knitting challenge is a fun thing to keep me pushing through the fact that it is so toasty warm. Um, but, um, what would it be? It isn't the case where I'm like, ah, oh, I'm panicking about all of the stash I have. It'd be like, it's more like right now, it's like, man, it's not fitting too great on the shelves right now, I should use some, so <sighs> let's find a project that uses so many at once, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Like, get, get some of those skeins out so I can fit more in. <laughs> um, so, so it'd be the case where, what was it? Like, when I started, it was like, oh, like, getting to 5,000 meters, like, cool. I didn't succeed for a while. <laughs> um, what would it be? So, I think... There, there is the, the personal challenge of guessing how much you're going to do and then doing it. There is the challenge of the, oh, there's no room in here right now. There is the challenge of, um, 
what is it? Um, so there's making room, there's the hitting your target, um, and then the, the finishing nibs. Now, I would say as a knitter, in order to hit the 5,000 meters, like you sort of needed to have a backlog of whips to finish during the event. Um, I didn't ever meet my goal until I start spinning, so that was a case where that was a way to get <coughs> excuse me yards quickly. Um, or that's the fastest. Like I spin faster than I knit, so I make way more yards of yarn than what is it? What I can knit in the same amount of time. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I have like a tickle in my throat, so. <coughs> <coughs> uh, excuse me. So, how am I approaching this time? So apparently I'm tempted to not cast off the project. <laughs> because, whatever, it counts for 2,000 yards. That's a pretty decent amount of yards, so. There's like the, the quantitative part of me is very interested in getting a large count the, um, what is it? I just already said it's probably silly to start a seven skein shawl. <laughs> um, in the summer when I'm really antsy to finish my three, or what is it, my 12 ounce shawl, because it's too big and warm, and this is way more than 12 ounces of yarn. <laughs> but such is life. I'm definitely, what would it be? Um, I would say right now in this like pre-project sort of state be like you know what it'd be very interesting like actually I'm sort of interested right now in starting my rolling rock, rock sweater or um what it be or scrappy socks oddly um what is it it's always satisfying to get the scraps out I don't know they take up they don't take up a lot of space but what would it be? I just find it to be interesting to use every last drop, if that makes any sense. Um, but then there are all sorts of things going on. So say, for example, if I make, excuse me, make my vanilla sock pattern and some fun self-striping yarn, that would be good too. Whatever. So there are options. It's not totally crazy. Um, The other thing would be like the charity knitting for SSK. I haven't, I'm not quite sure what I want to do there. Um, because the next Cal started and, um, I don't necessarily, I, I haven't run across a design yet that was like, oh yes, I must knit that. <laughs> um, and it has to be, um, someone who's attending and, I don't know, no, nothing is made me super duper excited to cast on, so, I don't know, whatever, so, I haven't decided what I'm going to do, and that one is like a yards count for points thing too, so, but, I don't know, so I just find it to be interesting, the, what, what you're going for and what you're trying to do, and, um, I'm definitely the sort where um, it changes from year to year about what, what it is that, that's motivating me, if that makes any sense. Um, whereas now it's the, it's just hot. <laughs> but I find, like, what is it? I find that knitting is important to my sanity, so. Like, it is what helps clear the brain. So it is important that you do that every so often. <laughs> so, I need to power through the summer. So now Stash Shash is about to power through the summer. I don't care about that. Um, so, that was quite the long ramble. I'm sorry about that. I believe it or not. <laughs> I think I know what the episode title should be, so I shouldn't do that. So, I will be recording next week. So that will be the 13th or the 14th. Um, I'll do that with any shawl.
Or maybe I won't, and you'll know that I've decided to be silly for stash dash. Details. I don't know. It's only three weeks. It's not that bad. <laughs> um, and with that, I hope you guys have a lovely day, and I look forward to talking to you guys next week. So, take care, guys. Bye-bye.